So welcome to my first thoughts on Octopath Traveler 2. Yes, the second game is finally here. I played the demo. I want to give some early impressions. I played with a couple of characters. No spoilers at all. I will ask you guys, are you looking forward to playing the second Octopath Traveler game? Did you enjoy the first game? Uh, are you looking forward to the second game? I want to say also as well, this game is available for PS5, PS4, Switch, PC, and sadly, not on Xbox yet. And I really hope they change that and it comes on Xbox eventually. Because I remember back in the day, Octopath Traveler 1 was on the Switch to begin with. And so let's get going here and let's go back uh, for a second to 2018. A little game got released right here. The first Octopath Traveler. Now, this is a really big deal game to think back on now because we were at a time when most games were coming out and there were big 3D RPGs going on and we were all loving them. None of us had a problem with that, but a lot of us like to look back to the past for the 16-bit, 32-bit era of RPGs, the certain look and the feeling that it gave us and we're very nostalgic about that, but also they were very, very good games. And I think we were at that right time because this came out and everybody jumped on it. Everybody was having that same feeling that they wanted to go back to the past, but experience a game still on modern consoles and with everything that that had to offer. And this game delivered and then some. It was a return to RPGs, the classic days, music-wise, graphic-wise, storyline-wise, multiple character-wise. It was a hit. And if anybody remembers back then, this game sold out. I remember making a video saying, Oh my god, Octopath Traveler sold out, and everybody else is like, oh my god, I need to snag this game. And I think most people who have played this game really, really enjoyed it. It's kind of a return to the good old days of, say, Final Fantasy 2 and 3 when they were released over here under those uh, titles uh, at that time. And I played this game, and I was it was like a love letter to the past, and I think they absolutely nailed it with the graphics, with the style, and all of that. So that brings us into modern day time, where now we have a demo. And that's the one thing I want to say. You can all just go and play this game today and play the demo. I played the Switch demo and I played it for over three plus hours uh, with multiple characters. I'm only going to show one character because I don't want to spoil anything. And that's the one thing I, I won't do. I won't spoil any of the main storylines of the game because you want to play this and experience this for yourself. So to begin with, I went in and the first thing I always do, I switch the language to Japanese and subtitles. I just like that. It just feels like I'm at home with that kind of thing. I'm always being uh, a subtitle guy over a dub guy most times, even though a lot of games have had really great dubs. For this, I was like, no, I'm going this way. And I feel it served me well. Now, how does this game stack up to the first game? I think it improves on a lot of different things. I think the storylines with all the characters are a lot more thought out, a little bit more human. I feel that sometimes in the original game, some of these storylines are a little bit staticky. They worked well, but this one feels a little bit more well written. And that starts us off with, you can pick up to eight different characters in eight different regions. And you can start anywhere you want to go. And it's kind of interesting because all these characters are very fleshed out. All of their continents are very fleshed out. All of their storylines are very well written and really good for each individual scenario. So let's have a look at these eight characters. In one of the scenarios, you play as a scholar who's framed and you're trying to get to the bottom of it. Uh, there's also a cleric where a tragic accident takes place in the church and you got to solve that mystery. And you play as a thief trying to escape the cycle of bloodshed and reclaim your freedom. You also play as a hunter trying to save your home from the night of the Scarlet Moon. And you play as an apothecary trying to discover what you lost and rediscover yourself. You also play as a warrior prince hoping to bring peace to your nations. And this is the one that I did. I play as a merchant looking to eliminate the devil called poverty in the world and I, I always thought that was really really funny and his scenario is really great that's the main one that I played and you also play as a tavern dancer who's had her heart set to begin her journey to stardom so there's many many different scenarios that you can pick and you're like 
Which one do I go with? I mean, you can't go wrong anywhere you start, because you'll all end up where you're gonna end up. You'll play through all of these scenarios eventually, but I really like the idea that you can pick and choose how you wanna begin, and I've really enjoyed playing these. I think they're really well fleshed out storylines, and really well written, and I really, really care about the characters. So even playing as the merchant, uh, without too many spoilers, you're playing in the past, uh, in a certain city, and I think some of the charm is that each individual character is differently, and plays differently, and even fights differently. And I think that's what's really cool, and that gets us into combat. Uh, just like the original game, turn-based combat. Yes, a return to the classics. You feel at home, and you feel very safe, and you're like, Oh, I like this, I really don't want to leave it at all. And that's the thing I really enjoy, is the boost gauge. So you can boost up your attacks, and do multiple attacks, take down your enemies, and then you can hit the X button and do a real counter-attack blow. But here's the thing, I gotta say, just like the original, this is a very, very difficult game in the sense that you really need to think about what you're doing with all your individual characters, because you gotta find out what your enemy's weaknesses are and exploit them. It's all about that. And it's also about taking care of your characters, healing them if they're injured, uh, healing them of toxins, things like that, and staying on board with all that, upgrading your characters. It's a classic RPG, and that's what I like. That's what I really like. And as it gets going, the strategy and the combat gets a lot more exciting and a lot more sweaty at times. And I really, really enjoy that. But if you stay on top of everything, building your characters up, you shouldn't have too much of a hard go with it. Okay, so graphics. This is a really, really interesting thing, because I had to go and look at Octopath Traveler 1's graphics again, and say, wait, how did these hold up, like, to this one now? I went and looked at the first game again, and I was like, the first game is still absolutely gorgeous, even though it's like four to five years ago, still holds up incredibly well. I think these graphics are incredible. And yes, there's a lot of people out there that are naysayers to say, oh, these look terrible, these graphics are horrible. They, they say that, I know, and I'm like, no, no, they're honoring 16-bit and 32-bit games. That's the look they're going for. So it's a pseudo 2D, 3D look to it, and I think they've gotten it really right. So yeah, so there's some low-res moments in the game with some characters, but that adds to the charm, I personally think. And I think all of the lighting, all of the textures, I think it's a sight to behold. And I think they've really gone above and beyond on some of the, the city environments are really amazing. And you can practically go into every single building that has a door. I really do appreciate that as well. I think there was a level of caring and a level of love that definitely went into this game. And what I really love at any single time, you can switch from day to night at any single time with the switch of one button that does it and some events will only happen during the day some events will only happen during the night and that's been done in other rpgs but still is implemented very well in this game and we return to one big thing here this is a really big thing and for any of you who've been watching the channel since the original octopath traveler came out you will know that I've been playing Octopath Traveler's music in my videos for the last four years. A lot of you have complained. <laughs> a lot of you complained said, oh no, it's not Octopath Traveler music again. Oh no. And I'm just like, I can't help it. I think the music is so good from the original game that I'm still listening to it all these years later. And I'm like, when that game came out, that music was classic RPG music that we would listen to for a lifetime. How does this game stand up? It's still early days for me, but it's fascinating how some of the combat music starts off and I'm like, wait, it's the combat music from the first game. But no, it uses some chords and some riffs from the original, and then it goes into its own composition, and it's good, and it gets you pumped up, and you really like it. And so far, I'm enjoying the music. I don't know if I'm enjoying it as much as I enjoyed the first game. The first game's music is like a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 music for me. Where this game, it still is early days for me, but it, it's pretty good. You know, for me, in talking about games, it's always about the emotion. Uh, you know, when I think back to games from, say, 20 years ago, I remember the emotion that the game gave me. Uh, sometimes I won't remember the puzzles I did, or some of the combat things I did, or anything like that. I just remember what the game meant to me. And I can say that with this game right away. This game feels really good. It feels really nice, like you're at home. You can slip into it and pick the way you want to go through the game and have a great RPG experience. And I know 
there's a lot of you out there that watch the show that don't play RPGs. And I understand it and I don't because I like RPGs. I'd say this is a great one to jump into. If you have a Switch, download the demo, try it out, pick one of the eight characters, whatever character you know you feel closest to, go through it and see how you feel with it. Uh, because I think this is a classic RPG. This is one of those games I think we'll be thinking about in another 20 years. We'll be like, man, Octopath Traveler 1 and 2 were one of those great games at the time. Uh, some of the highest, most remembered Switch RPGs on the machine. I think this is one of those games that we'll think back to in time and go, wow, Octopath Traveler, what a series. What a return to form and what a return to the good old days, but done in a brand new style for us now. And I'm telling you, the style that they used for this game, I know that they're gonna use on Dragon Quest III, the remake. I can't wait, I mean, that game looks amazing. And the foundations of what they made with this game, I think are outstanding. I really think this is a really fantastic RPG and I can't wait to play a lot more of it and really get into the other storylines. I mean, I've only brushed the surface and I'm that impressed. And so, uh, how are you guys feeling? Are you impressed with what you played so far? I know that I bet we've all played different characters at this point and gone on some very different adventures. We'll all get there together eventually, but so far, so good. And I gotta say, I love it when they release uh, demos. And I think there should be demos for nearly every single game out there. So you can just try it and say, you know what, is this for me? And yes, you can play a game like Octopath Traveler, uh, a demo, and play three hours of it. That's a long time to figure out if you're gonna like the game or not. And I can say, no problem here, I like the game quite a bit. I think it lives up to the past game, and I think it really builds on that. And I think with all the other characters and from the writing that I've seen so far, we're going in a brand new, even better direction than the original. And that's saying something. So I think this will go down as an RPG classic for all time. That's my humble opinion on it. I really feel that it has the makings of that. And I'm having a really great time fighting the bosses, uh, having the character interactions, and, and laughing. There's been some funny moments with the characters in here, and I've really enjoyed that as well. So, guys, I just want to come in and give some first thoughts for Octopath Traveler 2. I think it's really a stunning, interesting, well-written game so far. So, anyways, guys, until next time.